Major funding for this program is made possible by grants from HSH Nordbank New York Branch and First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Perfect Building Maintenance, Greenberg Traurig LP, Allied Partners, The Moynian Group. Additional funding for this program is made possible by grants from Ann Terry's Real Estate, Arbor Realty Trust, C.B. Richard Ellis, Cushman and Wakefield, Essex Capital Partners, Fremont Investment and Loan, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Muss Development LLC, Rosenthal and Rosenthal Inc., Signature Bank, Stonehenge Partners, Swig Equities, The Engel Berman Group, The Wickhoff Group, Titan Capital, YL Real Estate Developers. Welcome to the Stoller Report. My name is Michael Stoller. Everybody loves hotels. Everybody wants to run a hotel. Everybody's coming to New York City. 44 million people are projected to come to New York this year. And where are they staying? They're staying at hotels, owned and operated by these three people who are sitting with me today. I have the people who know what's happening, who love the hospitality business, and they're going to tell all my guests and all everything about the hospitality business. My guests today include... Patrick Denahan, co-CEO of Denahan Hospitality. Jennifer Williams, vice president and partner at Peninsula Real Estate. And last but not least, flying in from Taiwan, Sam Chang, chairman, president, CEO of McSam Hotels. What's this phenomena? What's happening? What happened to the hotel business? I mean, Jennifer's younger than us, Patrick and Sam. What, what happened all of a sudden? Hotels are, are popping up all over. But what, why is the hotel business so great today? Why is it so great today in New York? Yeah. The economy is uh, obviously booming. Uh, when you go back to 9-11, uh, right, right after uh, that terrible incident that happened here in uh, New York City, you know, we had two or three years that were pretty nasty. Uh, the stronger operators survived through all that time period. And uh, today you have so much money that's out there. You have so many people that want to stay here in Manhattan. Um, the rate structure that we are able to charge today, I'm sure that Sam and Jennifer will agree, it's finally taken us back to the year 2000 as if we didn't have those two or three bad years and brought us up to where we would have been if we just had an annual increase of 4%. So uh, tourism is up, as you opened up with, with 44 million people coming here. And, with our mayor, and hopefully our next mayor will be as positive about New York City, uh, just inviting more and more uh, people to come back tourism-wise. It's uh, just a confluence of many good things happening all at one time. So it's, it's, it's a good time right now in New York, especially for our business. We've gone through some bad times. You know, Sam, you've been in the hotel business, I don't want to age you, close to 28 years. Your first hotel when you were 18 years of age. but. You're like, you're like the Starbucks of hotels today. How many hotels are you building in New York City? Right now, I have 27 hotels under construction. 27 hotels under construction. And what kind of hotels? I mean, is there such a need? And what, how many, what kind of hotels are you building? Well, they go anywhere from a um, you know, two-star comfort inn to Sheraton. You name that, just pretty much we have it in the city right now. But is there a need for 25 new hotels? You're, and you're only one guy. There are other people who are also building all these hotels. Can the city absorb this? I mean, and this is a question for everybody. Well, let's look at historical in New York City. I mean, the last downturn in New York City, beside right after 9-11, okay, I think the last downtime in New York City, the occupancy is 67 percent. Right. Right. So 67 percent in Midwest, it would be a heaven. And in New York City, you know, it's an all-time low in the last 40 years. But if the operating expense, Sam, in New York City is greater than in the Midwest. Not necessary. Uh, uh, 
I don't agree with that. I, I mean, Patrick operates a hotel in Chicago. Well, I mean, what's the up? The costs are somewhat similar. Real estate taxes are less. But Labor's Chicago, a little less. But, but Chicago's you know. a major urban yes. city. I mean, you know, we're, we're talking about different situations. Jennifer, when you were with Tishman, you had hotels in other places over here. I mean, the, you know, I'm, I, I'm very positive about the city. Everybody knows that. My, my question that we said prior to the show is, I think that there's a need for additional hotels, especially with what the great job that the mayor and, mm -hmm. and what's happening in the economy. But every Tom, Dick, and Harry, as one would say, wants to be hotels. And I, I always use this story about my one time when I owned a piece of a racehorse. Uh, and when the horse won the first time we, we owned the horse, there was not enough room in the picture uh, because all the partners and limited investors were there. Forget the horse, it was just that. And, you know, it was a nice novelty for the first day until the horse got sick and they had to go swimming and we had to take him over here. It's, it's a nice novelty, but some of the people, Sam, that you're building these hotels, because some of them you own and then sometimes you sell them, some of these people aren't, aren't as astute uh, as a Patrick who's been in the business and his family's been in the business and your people who are, you know, Timmy and the other people, they're not that astute. And, and when tough times, and tough times come, you know, it's cycles, they're not going to be able to survive. You think these, all of them are going to be able to survive? Well, I agree. When the downturn comes, some people is not going to survive, right? But it all depends how you're going to build it, how much it's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. If you can build a hotel in the right price, even a downturn, you don't have to worry about it. But, you, you know, somebody, you know, I, I agree with you on the cost, but I think, you know, when we, when we talk about your 25 hotels that you're building in Manhattan, you're, and I know you're building in Brooklyn, you know, the, the question, and you're the first one who said to me a couple of weeks ago, you know, I said, what's your opinion of, like, Coney Island? I mean, you know, there's this big story, you know, that Joe Sid wants to build this hotel in Coney Island. I can't see people running to Coney Island in the winter. Do you? I think a small hotel will do well in Coney Island. You know, summertime you're going to do great, okay? Wintertime you're going to be slow, but you still have a local business that will go there. So let's put an example. If you have to pay $350 for downtown area in Brooklyn Bridge, um, in Coney Island, in the wintertime, you offer $95 room rate. So the people who have to pay out of their own pocket, they're going to drive to Coney Island, in my opinion. And I think you also have to drill down on what the new supply actually is. You know, Manhattan has 65,000 hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. The majority of the new supply is smaller, either limited service or boutique hotels. And that's only, you know, a 2% annual increase in the supply. And the fundamentals of the hotel market now in New York are so strong. And there's no way New York City is a novelty by by any means, it's always been strong and it always rebounds. We have some other stronger aspects, and I agree with what Jennifer just said. <clears throat> the dollar, and it always, New York is always counter cyclical to what happens in the rest of the U.S. When the dollar really goes down and business is not in good shape, we have more international travelers that come here, and we have more people that stay here in the U.S. to travel to New York, and we have more international travelers that come in. So. And plus, if you look at the work you asked before in regards to how, you know, just the point of the uh, sustainability, I don't think we're overbuilt. I don't think we'll be overbuilt with, I think, what's coming on the market in the next three to five years, about 3,000 more hotel rooms. With the Javits expansion that's planned, and hopefully our governor uh, approves it, which I, I'm sure will be adjusted somewhat, but that's great new business uh, and, and will place New York City probably in the top five instead of the 19th position that it is in today as far as a convention city to come to. So there's a, there's a lot of good things that are happening. A lot of the supply that went off market that turned into condominiums, that was good for our business as a hotel operator. So I'm just, uh, it's, it's, I see in our business, and I think Sam and Jennifer mm -hmm. agree, there's a good five to ten year ride still. And, you know, cycles will happen. But if the operator is strong, and I agree also with Sam, if we, if our Early dollars in up front, all of our capitalized dollars in up front are in the proper dollars, you're going to make money. Now, but, you know, and, and I'm not disagreeing. The, the question is, New York City needs, it's nice to have the two-star, the three-star, <coughs> but New York City, 
you know, needs the larger hotel. I mean, there's one hotel plan for Javits, which is a thousand rooms. Right. Uh, when you were at Tishman, that was the, that was the last big hotel. Yeah, the Western New York is 860 rooms. Mm -hmm. But and that, that was it. I mean, that was it. There hasn't been there's, anything. There's nowhere to build a it. And, and someone said, you can't even afford to build a five star hotel today. I mean, the, the cost. Yeah, I mean, the, the cost of a luxury hotel would be approaching a million. I mean, we've heard numbers, even the convention center hotel, with all of the, you know, benefits that we'll have for being a city project, but they're costing it out at you know eight to nine hundred thousand dollars a key. And, and and if and, and if your cost per key is eight to nine hundred thousand, what do you have to what do you have to charge for a room? How do you you know this was a discussion that you were at my NYU course, mm -hmm. and we asked the question you were at this and. If you if your room cost you three five hundred thousand dollars or even a million dollars, how do you determine? Do you flip it in the air? You know, how do you determine a, a room rate? How do you determine what a, a room rate should be? To me, if it costs a million dollars per bill, you need to charge five hundred dollars a night on your ADR. But you're saying average out for the year, not five hundred. You have to get an average for the entire year. You have year. to get an ADR for five hundred, <laughs> mm -hmm. then you can break even. And, and what do you feel? We do it a little differently. I'm sure we would probably come to a similar number. We'll do the competitive set analysis to make sure who we're going to be competing against. We'll take all of our upfront dollars in it and uh, go and run it out and just do based on the occupancy and the rent par uh, looking forward. So it's never, for me, it's never a million dollars, 500. It is always who we're going to compete with as we move forward. You know, last year, two hotels traded at record, record prices. Uh, one of them is my, was my own colleagues, and I wasn't involved with the company, and it cost at that time probably a million dollars a room, and they sold it for $1.3 million a room. And as I said to Jeff Blau in a panel prior, the old Germania insurance company, the W Hotel on 16th Street or 18th Street, yeah. I mean, sold for $1.2 million. Now, if somebody's paying that type of money, you know, they, they, I think, Sam, they, they can't even afford to live with $500 a night over there. I mean, who Well, it's all about, the, you know, the specific investor profile that, <coughs> you know, the, the group from Dubai or their strategic investors, and they want a certain asset, and their return requirements have got to be obviously lower than an opportun opportunistic investor. And, you know, I, we know those hotels well, the W Union Square and the, and the Mandarin. And the W Union Square does a very high room rate. I mean, it probably approaches $500 now because it's such a great quality hotel downtown and they're mm -hmm. hard to find downtown. And don't forget, too, the food and beverage area of it is a, is a, is, gold, is mine. a gold mine. So I think without that, piece of it they developed. So I'm not so sure it'd be worth the money they paid for it. Yeah, but if, if you're looking, and, and I mean, Sam, I, I, I joke with you because you know I have the highest regard for you. You know, you're building all these hotels. How do you make a determination, and let's take Manhattan first, and then let's go to the boroughs. How do you make a determination of where? Because land prices are so expensive in New York City. I mean, you know, how do you determine where where do you, where would you build? I mean, you and I discussed this recently. Mm -hmm. Patrick, we, you know, you, you have some opportunities to look. You, well, you want to put some new hotels on. I know Jennifer does, buying two hotels from you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where would you look? You'd look downtown. You'd look at the opportunities. You'd look at the developable air rights you can get. The problem is everything today is at least four to five hundred dollars a square foot that you're buying. So it's just a lot, of, right? I mean, would you would you agree or what would you think you'd pay for developing? Would you call me tomorrow? I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I told you no brokering this show. <laughs> I'm not. But no, no, but I, I no, mean. If you're buying a great location, if you're not going to create a location, if you want to buy a great destination today, if you're trying to just buy air rights to then develop it, you're spending at least $400 a foot today, at least. But, but you know, but this so you want to buy a location. Just to answer the question, I think. But here's with regard to location. Someone called me up, and I think I'm having a meeting tomorrow. He said he's bringing in an investor, and he wants to build a hotel on West Street. Mm -hmm. The only hotels that I remember on West Street mm -hmm. were not hotels that I would ask friends or anyone That's to go to. That's a great area. Right. Yeah, we're, we're, we might be talking to the same person. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. No, but West Street today <laughs> is, is a different area. I mean, West Street is a different area. I mean, when, when Richard Bourne built, you know, took over the Maritime, it was a different area. Right. Um, there, is there no bad location in Manhattan? I, Sam? 
Jennifer? I, I mean, for the next couple years, the answer is probably no, there isn't. But it's just a matter of if the market cools a little bit, you know, probably the boroughs will be hurt first. But, you know, like we, we talked about a little bit earlier, Midtown Manhattan is, is the place to be. Everywhere else, you have to be a little bit more careful with your underwriting, I mean, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I would agree. You know, everybody likes Williamsburg. I mean, this is, I did a show two or three weeks ago, and it is echo boomers. Everybody wants to go there, live on the L train, you know, Bohemia and this and that. Jennifer probably goes there, maybe, and lives there. <laughs> no, I live oh. on the Lower East Side. Okay, I don't make so, it to fine, exactly, exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. Yes. I mean, the 14 room uh, Hotel Lafayette opened, uh, you know. Yeah, the Allen Street the, Hotel, the, Allen the Hotel, Street hotel. Every, right. you know. all, all these things, mm -hmm. the Rivington Street, a separate story. It shows you that you can be a failure and be successful later on. Uh, he's not on the show anyway. <laughs> Here, here's the question. What, what do you think? I mean, Williamsburg is so hot in residential and people want to be there. What do you think about Williamsburg? I haven't heard of Sam Chang opening up in Williamsburg yet. Who, who, who's the first one ever built a new hotel in Lower East Side? Sam Chang. Who's the first one ever built a new hotel in Javik Center? Me. Sam Chang. Okay. Who's the first one ever built a hotel in Long Island City? Me. Who's the first one ever built a new hotel in JFK in the last 20 years? Me, right? I have so much opportunity in Williamsburg. I look so many signs in Williamsburg. First of all, they are overpriced. The land, the, 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 the land price in Williamsburg is approaching 70% of New York City for hotel development, right? Number one. Number two, where's the business going to come from? When you go to JFK, you have an airport. You have some local business, cargo. Okay, um, when you go to Long Island City, you are one stop for Midtown. From but you told Street. me there's there's no need for any more hotels in Long Island. No City. more. Okay. Okay. I think it's enough because when they're going to put so many rooms in Long Island City, it's going to be enough. So get back to Williamsburg. I apologize. So where's the business coming from in Williamsburg? I mean, to me, there's no business that's going to come in from nowhere. So that's in the same manner as Jennifer said, or you said, about Coney Island. Where's the business coming for Coney Island? What, the Russian communities in Brighton Beach? They're not in, uh, they're not in Coney Island yet. You have summer business in there, right? You have four months business in there. It's like everybody loves downtown. Everybody loves Wall Street area, okay? Do you have a site there? Wall Street? No, no, Coney Island. I don't. But I have to speak up for, for the Coney Island. Mm -hmm. Like a Wall Street, you only do four days, four days, and four days a week business, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But if you take 100% occupancy for four days, okay, you are already a 65% occupancy. But the interesting thing, and I'd like to tell this to my viewers, the four days in Midtown are really Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and the five days in. Lower Manhattan, the four days are Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, right? No, 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 no. 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 In downtown, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But well, I heard that also on the weekends, the, the occupancy because of the travel. Nope. The tourists, no? Not in downtown. That's in, in Lower East Side. It's different. In downtown area, you only do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You 100% occupancy on Monday to Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you have to sell the price. You have to sell your room for half price. And to what Sam's saying, it's a little bit different in our products because our customers, Jennifer knows, mm -hmm. are Fridays and Saturdays on top of the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are strong. And it's really because of the product and because of our customer base that's gotten used to it. So the individuals that come to Manhattan really want to stay in our properties because there's more space and they've gotten used to what we, are, what we provide as good service to them. So it's... We're a little bit different anomaly in terms of what we're able to provide. And you're saying that on the Lower East Side, where you have the hotel in Rivington Street, uh, the Pomerantz's new type of hotel, the Bowery Hotel, the, the B&D is over there, and those are more of the weekend, the Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Yeah, because I, what are you drawing from? There's not a whole lot. I, I live in the Lower East Side. There's not a whole lot of business going on there. What I've, what I've heard anecdotally are... You know, the advertising people who want to check out the new cool hotel, they've stayed at the Rivington, they'll definitely go to the Allen during the week, but the weekend, it's a whole different story down there. It's historic. There's a lot of tourists. So I, I've, I've noticed they're very busy down by me on the weekends, but during the week, I don't know how they survive, honestly.
what you know, same till Coney Island is, you know, four months of the year. Yankee Stadium is more than four months of the year. No. What a, no. <laughs> Do your calculation. <laughs> April, May, June, right? July, October. August, September. <laughs> I have six, and if they win the series, they gotta go it's to seven. the playoffs. No, no, no. But they, sometimes they play at home and they play away. Coney and they don't play every time. day. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't like the Bronx? All of a sudden, you're not a cheerleader for the Bronx? I love Bronx, but they don't, you know, they don't allow me to build, you know. No, they don't allow you. You haven't decided to build in the Bronx. I did. I, my first hotel development in Bronx, they stopped me to build. Why? I have all the approval. Yeah. Bronx is probably the toughest bro in New York City to build a hotel. I thought, you know, people going to Staten Island, you know, it's bridge and other things. Oh, I love Staten Island. You love Staten Island. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. But uh, it, right now, you know, we were talking about this prior to the show. What's your opinion of Harlem? You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm very keen on Harlem. Uh, well, I, what's the opinion of you, Jennifer, and Sam? Let's talk I Patrick. think it's very difficult in Harlem when you look at the demand generators that are there. There are a few uh, that could really give three or four or five hotels solid occupancy. If, the, if Harlem could take, in my opinion, four to seven hundred rooms, as you know, opposed two to or three 2, hotels, okay, maybe it could sustain that itself. But if you look at the the demand generators with the hospitals that are there, with some of the museums there, with the Apollo Theater there, you know, it, it's it's going to be difficult, I think, to have you, more than two properties. But you believe there'll be two hotels? I think there will be. Yeah, Jen? Yeah, I, I agree with Patrick. I think, um, at least initially, the closest thing is that the new courtyard up on 92nd Street, and all, if you talk to Marriott, they say that's been very successful, and they're very pleased, and it's exceeding expectations, but to build more than you know, one or two more, I, I don't see it. Sam? I think 96, 96th Street is not Harlem. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. It's the closest okay. thing. That's closest I'm talking 125th Street. Right. I'm right. talking 116th Street and 126th Street, Atlantic Avenue. I think for the people who want to stay in the Harlem, it's no different than they go to Long Island City, or no different than they go to Jersey, no different than they go to Brooklyn. So, but I didn't hear of one of the 25 that you're building that you were building in Harlem. Well, the way I look at it is, uh, you know, there's many people propose to build a hotel in Harlem, and the cost is more than Brooklyn and Long Island City. So, if it's my choice, I would rather build in Brooklyn and the Long Island City for the lower cost, and the way the customer is going to look is the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same trouble with this, and if you take a Times Square to go to Harlem or you go to Long Island City, Long Island City will probably closer. It's closer. So why should I go mm -hmm. to Harlem? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, you're talking, you'd build something for the location and the demand of the customers. Right. Not saying if I build it, they will come. Right? That's, so if there's not enough mass in that area, I know that we won't put our equity into it and know we get financing for it. So, so is Long Island City. Right. There's no demand for the hotel. Right. Same as Harlem. Mm -hmm. The demand is coming from Midtown. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a number of, Patrick was on my show when I was on radio, and I still remember we, we got to this discussion of boutiques, and, you know, uh, Jennifer just brought it up with, with the, this boutiques. Where do we stand? I mean, W is a boutique, um, but in essence, the Benjamin, isn't that a boutique? I mean... Depends what your description is of a boutique. But what, for, for my audience, mm -hmm. because everybody hears this misnomer, mm -hmm. what is a boutique, you know, in your opinion? I wouldn't take the W as a boutique. It's a, it's a brand to itself, what they developed, and they copied Ian Schrager years ago, and they've been very successful to be able to put that into multiple cities. They sound like a, a fantastically large brand. They only have 17... W's. That's all they have. I think the, the world thinks they have 50 or 100 of them, but they have 17 of them. I, that is a W brand. It's like a Marriott. It's like a, you know, it's, it's just a little bit upscale for the customer that they try to appeal to. A boutique, smaller size property. Probably, I know what we do in terms of what we deliver our service to our customer. We work on the lifestyle. We work on all the different uh, uh, areas that people really would like to be involved with. We have one hotel that all, all the hotel relates around fitness, 
and Sarah Finney and Dumont. We have a lot of people to stay with us from L.A. and that, that part of uh, the U.S. that really love to come there. We have another one that's around uh, the, the area of wellness, uh, which is up in the 60s, the Affinia Gardens. We do a large part of our business there that uh, does with cosmetic surgery, which really works up in that area itself. So it, we, boutique for me is smaller size, great service, work towards a lifestyle where people are really interested in, and, and that's what delivery of great service itself. And Jennifer? Yeah, um, you know, it's a little bit different to everyone. Boutique to me, along the same lines, you know, it's small. It's usually, you know, definitely 150 rooms or below, usually less than 100, and something that's very unique. And it's, it's got she, some she, kind of hook. It's yeah, got it some a, kind some of special, of... special feature, special service that draws you in. Sam? What's your opinion of a boutique? Especially since you told me uh, that you have plenty to build a, a boutique. I mean, this one right over here, 372, is a small hotel. It's a cute boutique, you know? But, but what's a boutique to you? Well, first of all, I don't think W is a boutique. I mean, I think W is a franchise, 50% franchise hotel, 50% boutique, mm -hmm. a combination. You know, and a boutique is usually a lifestyle hotel and a guest service experience. Yeah, for the for the boutique hotel, even the one we have right in the corner here is only 70 room, but we still need a doorman in there. You know, they don't like an electronic door, okay? And they they like to have a doorman standing in front, open the door for you. You know, guide you into the hotel, a real personal service hotel. I think that's what what they call the boutique hotel. So okay, so, I mean. From what I see and what I hear, you know, this is the time to be in the hotel business. In your entire career, is it the best time that you've ever seen in the hospitality business? I mean, you've been in it a long time, you and your I grew family. Up in it, yeah, it's just, uh, it is the best time the last two years. The next two years out, for sure, I'm, I'm very positive we're going to sustain itself and have continual growth, and as we look out longer, it's... it's right, and in, sh in your short career <laughs> of 10 years, would you see... No, that's absolutely true. If you, you know, you can look at the data, the occupancy rate this year in Manhattan, 85% is the highest in 12 years, and the growth rates are, you know, breaking all kinds of records. Sam? I don't think it's the best time to be in the hotel business, but I think it's the best location, I mean, uh, best area to be in the business. Uh, I mean... If you're in the outside of New York City, I mean, I don't think you think it's the best time to go into the business. We're only talking New York. Right. And, and in New York, it's the best time okay. right now. I think that my viewers have really got a good idea of what's happening in the hospitality business because I had some great guests today. I'd like to thank Patrick Denahan, Jennifer Williams, and last but not least, Sam Chang. Next week... We're going to talk about what's happening in Rockaway and Long Beach, at which we, I didn't ask you or you a question. Thank you. See you next week. Major funding for this program is made possible by grants from HSH Nordbank New York Branch and First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Perfect Building Maintenance, Greenberg Traurig LP, Allied Partners, The Moynian Group. Additional funding for this program is made possible by grants from Ann Terry's Real Estate, Arbor Realty Trust, C.B. Richard Ellis, Cushman and Wakefield, Essex Capital Partners, Fremont Investment and Loan, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Muss Development LLC, Rosenthal and Rosenthal Inc., Signature Bank, Stonehenge Partners, Swig Equities, The Engel Berman Group, The Wickhoff Group, Titan Capital, YL Real Estate Developers.